last time what did we do we talked about eub so what are we trying to do we are trying to reduce the length of the transistor that's all we are trying to do and why are we doing that we want to pack as many as possible in a given uh, square footage right as i like to call it you want to pack as many transistors as possible so you can get in the same die area i can get more and more and more and more we are so greedy right as human beings we want to get every year we want to double the number of transistors almost to be packed on a chip and what's the advantage of that of course we are going to reduce the size of the transistors that's the goal that we are trying to do we are also trying to reduce the on resistance of the transistor it's not just the transistor uh, that matters right we want to reduce the on resistance otherwise the quality of the transistor will suffer because there is some voltage that you are applying to the inverter okay and for that same voltage i want a better transistor so i want to reduce the channel resistance for that matter okay so that's one thing hmm? and the second thing that's important which we never talked about so far in any one of our uh, lectures is something called off current and when the transistor is turned off there is leakage current that is flowing and that leakage current is being dissipated in your chip so of course the temperature increases and we were at a lower end technology what we were doing was uh, the leakage current was quite small in like nano amps and things like that but as you go to this higher end technologies the leakage current grows like orders and orders of magnitude so for example if you look at some of the latest uh, microprocessors from intel if you turn off the processor and there is no, no action going on it will suck out about a 1 watt of power something like that so you can imagine right so how why leakage current is important so literally there is nothing going on it will take up a lot of power our goal in life is reduce the size of the transistor improve the on resistance of the transistor and reduce the leakage so this is goal of all the foundry people huh? that's what they are trying to do hmm? and at the same time by doing all this we want the highest frequency of operation okay and then we want to spend least amount of power because finally what's going on is okay i kept my phone inside but your phone is working off a battery and that phone has power one phone has a power of whatever the world was consuming and the the processing power 40 years ago right now each phone is carrying that kind of processing uh, today i'm going to do something a little bit different this is what you are used to huh? this is the what i have taught in the classroom right this is our standard lateral mosfet transistor i have been kind of wanting to show you this for a long time this is my well or a substrate correct and then in that well or a substrate i have these diffusions do you remember the candy bar huh unfortunately the candy bar here is green otherwise it would have okay looks like this is all packed up okay that's the diffusion layer okay you remember the candy bar side wall capacitance bottom wall capacitance and all that stuff right this is a diffusion that we are putting in so in this particular case hmm, this is my drain hmm, and this is my source and this is the bulk connection let's ignore the bulk connection for now all right and now on top of that what i am going to do is i'm going to put some oxide which is the gray color oxide you see it the gray color oxide and on top of that Hmm. I'm going to put my. This is the poly. The red is the poly. Okay, and this is what the transistor looks like. And if you see carefully, uh, let me see if I can laterally show it to you. Hmm. There will be some overlap between poly and the the green stuff. And what is that called? Overlap capacitance. Do you remember that that we learned overlap capacitance? So this is kind of what we learned in. our a device you know how the mosfet device looks like the reason i'm showing you this is because i want you to realize the limitations of this device right this is all cool stuff when we learn in the textbook and in the classroom this was valid till 2000 year 2000 all this stuff okay beyond that we got in trouble so i'm going to explain that to you today and that's the point of today's chip story okay so are you with me so far okay what are we trying to do when we are trying to trying to scale the device we are trying to bring these diffusions closer and closer together as close as together as possible as a result of which this poly will get smaller and smaller and smaller and this is the channel length okay and this is the channel width of our device clear so the motivation is clear right and let me kind of take you to the next level is if you see here 
there are holes. What are those holes? They are called vias. So they are holes drilled into the oxide so that I can put metal there. Agreed? Okay. So here is for example, so this is the oxide that's sitting on top and then I can connect it like this. So this becomes now my metal piece. Okay. So the metal is traveling through the oxide through those drills and touching the relevant pieces. So this would be my poly connection. It's very short stub. This is a poly connection. So what is this connection? Drain connection. This is my poly connection, gate connection. And this is my source connection. And this is my bulk connection. Now you know more than you know, most of the chip designers know. In 3D, you know, once you start imagining things in 3D, uh, you will get that confidence. So it took us a while uh, to build this model in the lab. And we went through so many revisions because, you know, I'm pretty painful and very Shubham here. Is he here? Ah, so Shubham is the one who helped me with this because we are struggling with the 3D printer. Last night he was, um, I, I really gave him a hard time because I wanted to show you these colors. Without the colors, it's not very, uh, very clear. So uh, let's go over that again. The green is our diffusion. And these are the colors you will see when you design something in Cadence, our software. Okay. And then uh, next will be our gray oxide. This is the gate oxide, which is ultra high quality gate oxide. Uh, there should, cannot be any, any garbage in that gate oxide. Because you have a charge trap, what will happen? Your VT will change. You remember that, right? VT cast stuff. And then on top of that, we have this, this poly, which is the gate. And then next we have is the metal pieces. Hmm? Like this. Correct? All good? Now, what is going on as we start to make this shorter and shorter? Let me see if I can show you the cross section again. So I'm kind of opening it up for you. You can see the cross section. Huh? So as I'm making this poly smaller, as I'm bringing the source and drain closer together, where is the leakage going? Do you remember we talked about leakage current? Where is the leakage going? The leakage is going down. There is an entire, you know, surface on the bottom that's exposed. And that's where the, the leak that's happening is over there. So I think once you understand the logic behind this leakage current, the next idea will pop in your head. How do I get rid of this leakage? Okay, because the leakage will bump up your power and also it will limit other thing that happens is as you start reducing this, uh, this poly, right? you lose the control over that VT because we want that VT to be certain value. And now suddenly, as I start making things smaller and smaller, you kind of lose the control over VT. And then, uh, you know, uh, that makes things worse. Leakage gets worse. Are you with me so far? What is the problem that we are trying to solve? Okay, all right. So the next thing that came up was something called fin fit. I just wanted to give you a feel for fins. Uh, you have seen the sharks, right? That top piece is the fin that I want you to remember, not the bottom part, okay? Uh, although I love that shark. He looks, he looks happy and smiling. So, uh, so that's our fin that we want to uh, replicate on a chip. And you will see where the idea came up. Uh, so here is the fin fed transistor. And I'll explain it to you with a 3D model and you will realize uh, how cool this idea is. Uh, and how it brought us where we are. That's the whole purpose of chip story. Uh, how did we get here is the key, key idea. Earlier, the device was two-dimensional, X and Y. Now we have a third dimension, like a fin. So this, the green stuff that you're seeing is the fin. Basically, the transistor is not in the substrate anymore. The transistor is standing up like a fin. And that is the fin. And that's where the drain and source is. And on top of that, we are covering oxide. And on top of that, we have poly. Right? That's the fin-fed transistor. And what this did was uh, something phenomenal. The phenomenal part, you can already realize what was the problem with the previous structure. On the bottom, what was going on? We had no control. Huh? We are just leaking like crazy on the bottom. And I'm exaggerating all this stuff, but you can visualize what I'm saying, right? You have no control over uh, the transistor on the bottom. Now here what happens is the gate is all around hugging huh? our bar of silicon. Do you see that? So you have complete control over the situation. And once you do this, the quality of the transistor improves radically. Because now I have complete control over the channel. Uh, there is no leakage, virtually zero leakage in this case, uh, because this is standing, uh, sitting on an oxide and you're completely controlling the channel using our poly. Yeah. All right. Other benefit is 
I can make this thing even tinier, smaller, smaller, smaller. Okay, all right. So you will see where that's going. And here is a cross section of the device. So the, the red is gate. Uh, the gray is our uh, oxide and the green stuff is the diffusion that we are talking about. The top piece is kind of, I'm showing you in 3D and uh, this one is in a uh, cross section. So now, you know, again, you know, we, uh, Shubham and I, uh, we had lots of fights uh, making this thing, right? So uh, this is the way the 3D transistor looks like in a nutshell, right? And now it looks complicated, but my job is to make things easy for you. Now, let me see which one I can move. The blue is the metal connection to our source and drain and this is our diffusion and this is the the poly with the gate oxide okay so it's just laying like this like this and then I have another metal connection so what you see is once I once I put it all together something like this okay so what I have here now is, so I want you to imagine this now, since I've shown this to you, this bottom piece is oxide, called box, uh, buried oxide, uh, which is on a, on a silicon wafer, hmm? uh, got it? And then on that, I'm growing these green fins, the shark fins that we saw, right? Uh, the green pieces. And on top of that, I'm, I'm landing these uh, oxide and poly, okay? How many transistors do you think this piece has? Can you guess? Six transistors, okay? So uh, the structure here, if you see carefully, uh, this can be my um, NMOS transistor and this can be my PMOS transistor. And if you do something clever, then this can be my complete inverter huh? because this would be my uh, ground connection. Oh, sorry, this was NMOS, right? So this is my ground connection. This is my gate connection. This is my two drains connected together. This is again, the gate connection shorted control and uh, so these two, two drains will be my output and this will be my VDD connection. Do you see that? So I have three inverters lined up here and this is what the FinFET technology is. When you look at today's technology, as I said, you know, we are going towards nanometer technology. We are not there yet. Right now, where are we? The latest Apple's I think M4 processor, if I remember, it's in two nanometer technology. So we haven't reached one nanometer yet, but that's in two nanometer technology. Now you may think that, oh, I have one nanometer of gate. That's not what it is. That used to be true almost till 60 to 45 nanometer. I'm gonna show you what that two nanometer really means. Okay, so the next thing is, you know, who invented it? Because we always uh, want to be, uh, you know, proud of our ancestors here, right? So in this case, um, uh, Dr. Dig Hisamoto-san, he's from Hitachi, he published the first paper from Hitachi Labs. So he was solving the same problem of leakage on the bottom. And then he came up with the first idea. And then DARPA, they, they saw this and they got, they said, oh, this is the way to go. I go for this conference every year in February. I remember the mood at that time that Moore's law is dead. Okay, every year we would have these panel discussions where see, people would say Moore's law is dead. And this 2000 time frame, I remember that they were running out of steam. And this idea came along. And then it gave us life for another 25 years. So you can imagine how important this idea is, okay? So Professor Cheming Hu, uh, he's at UC Berkeley, he got an award for this. Uh, and uh, Dr. Dig hisamoto san he got an uh, Andy Grove. You remember Andy Grove, Intel founder? That medal of honor from IEEE, he got that one. So he's the first one who did it this. He came to uh, Berkeley from Japan on an industrial visiting fellow. And then right there, uh, they developed the entire process. Uh, Professor uh, Cheming Hu, he was also at TSMC. He was the CTO of TSMC. So this whole idea kind of eventually percolated to all the practical, uh, the idea is coming up with idea is one thing, but making it production worthy is, you know, 100 dB more effort. Let me put it this way. I hope you understand what 100 dB means, right? So uh, that's the neat thing that they did. They made it production worthy. And that's where we are today, okay? So here is the cross section of the transistor the real transistor. In a fin fact, uh, what you see here is again, you know, this piece. Okay, can you see that? This uh, zigzag piece that's going on, right? So NMOS and PMOS, you can, you can see them. And here is a, what does this look like? This almost looks like waffle. I love Belgian waffle. This is actual real picture of a, of a chip, you know, I, and this is kind of what, what we are, I'm showing you is this piece right here, right? This piece. 
right? This is kind of what it looks like because there are so many transistors. Uh, the each crossover is a transistor. Okay, all right. This we are we can pack more, more, more in the same die area, the transistor. Okay. Now the last slide I want you to appreciate. This kind of captures everything. Since sliced bread, I like to call it right. When we were down here, hmm, I think this is I was still in school. We were at 250 nanometers, uh, 180 nanometers, 130 nanometers, 90 nanometers. Things were okay. 65 nanometers, things were okay. We, we could do all these things. There are lots of innovations which happen. Uh, so, you know, there is only so much you can do in a transistor. There is substrate, there is source and drain region, and then there is a gate, and then there is an oxide. That's it. These are the all four possible things. People worked on every piece. People invented new oxide. People invent, started doing metal gate oxide. Then, uh, you know, they put some uh, stress under the channel. All these things were just to improve two things. One is on resistance, second one was off current. So all these things people were doing and things were going very well. Every year, following the Moore's law, we were able to pack more, more, more. Around uh, 2000 time frame, 65 nanometer, 45 nanometer, that's when things got really ugly. Uh, that because we couldn't get any further. Leakage was ex extremely high. You could pack more transistors, but you would leak a lot. So then that's when this FinFET idea became production worthy. Uh, since then, it's been the FinFET everywhere. So you can see, currently, we are actually beating the prediction. This was a prediction in, I think, uh, 2018. Uh, this is something I picked up from Nature Electronics. And you see that the prediction was 2024, we would be at uh, 3.5 nanometer device. And here we are, 2 nanometers. We are at 2 nanometers right now. Let's see where it goes. We don't know. Uh, maybe we'll go sub-nanometer. So it's exciting time to be here. Maybe there will be some... I mean, there are lots of innovations going on right now, which which we just don't know yet. Because the result, final result is happening 10 years later. Uh, okay, so what we are seeing right now is 10 years ago what people invented. Because it has to come to production level before it can really become uh, the run of the mill thing, right? So a very exciting time to be around at this time because uh, we have to see what new innovations are gonna happen. A um, Lot of innovations are happening in the material science. Okay, so one of the things kind of I want to leave you out with uh, about Dr. Digg, right? He was a chemistry guy. He did his bachelor's and master's in chemistry and then he got into this and he invented uh, what we are doing right now. The key point I'm trying to make is not everybody has electrical engineer or, or computer science, right? All these other streams are so important for foundries, which is chemistry, physics, chemical engineering, civil engineering, every aspect of what we do, metallurgy, right? All these things are kind of, it's a crucible of all the dis different disciplines, which is what is going to get us to the foundry, okay? So we're kind of coming close to our chip story. Hopefully next time uh, I will talk about India, where India is, okay? Because that's kind of the most exciting part of uh, where you are going to be. Uh, what are you going to be working on, right? Thank you so much.